Strafe jumping was first discovered in 1996's first-person shooter Quake. Although it was a bug, it was a widely used tactic, so the developers were convinced to keep the source of the bug in the coding. Any game that uses the Quake engine has a certain version of strafe jumping, and most Call of Duty games are included. The reason this bug arose is that a specific horizontal mouse movement performed while sprinting caused the player to travel faster than normal sprinting speeds. Combining this technique with jumping was soon discovered to be even faster, which gave birth to the name strafe jumping. In COD 4, the player walks by default 190 units per second, 152 while strafing left or right, and 285 while sprinting. Combining forward sprinting and left and right strafe movements alone don't affect the speed at all. But when the horizontal mouse movement and a jump is added, the speed increases dramatically, reaching speeds of up to 500 units per second. With PC COD 4, there is an additional bug relating to maximum FPS, which also changes movement mechanics. This bug is caused by irregularities in the game's ability to send packets to the server host due to these specific maximums, but it does not depend on ping value. This is the reason why FPS changes in single player do not affect the player's movement, as there is no host to send packets to. Now you might be asking, why does dev maps still have these same effects? Even though you are playing alone in your own server, dev maps still creates a server host, which is you. Keep in mind that changing FPS also does not affect speed if the player doesn't jump or use the mouse movement. It will stay at 285 units per second when sprinting. Also, these higher speeds are only valid when the ground is completely level, with no differences in depth or height. Otherwise, gravity will also have to be taken into account with the speed of the player because of the height differences. By default, the maximum FPS is set to 60, allowing the player to strafe dump at a speed of about 400 units per second. The speed is approximate for every strafe, as it is completely dependent on the direction of the strafe jump and the accuracy of the mouse movement. To apply a cap to your FPS in COD 4, go to Options, then Game Options, and make sure that Enable Console is set to Yes. Then, press the tilde key at the top left of your keyboard. This opens a console, allowing you to enter commands into the game. Type in the command forward slash com underscore max FPS space FPS value should do the trick. If your FPS does not show up on the screen, type forward slash CG underscore draw FPS 1 into the console. The three most common FPS caps are 125, 250, and 333, all of which offering unique effects to the player's movement mechanics. With 125 FPS, the player can reach a speed of up to about 430 units per second when strafe jumping north, south, east, or west, and has a jump height of 40 and a half units, the default being 39. With 250 FPS, the player can reach a speed of up to about 480 units per second when strafe jumping northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest, and has a jump height of 41.5 units. With 333 FPS, the player can reach a speed of up to about 500 units per second with the same directions of 250, but with a jump height of 46 units. To determine these directions, there is a compass right above the minimap. If there is no minimap, type forward slash HUD underscore enable 1 into the console. The most ideal FPS to use when traveling around the map would obviously be 333, right? Yes, but there are a few exceptions. Many servers that run ProMod ban the use of 333 due to the drastic increase in jump height and decreasing gravity. This leaves 250 FPS to be the ideal for ProMod. Also, servers that run Deathrun and a few other mods set the jump underscore slow down enable command to zero which disables a slowed player movement immediately after landing a jump. This completely changes the ideal FPS, since the player is able to perform successive strafe jumps without losing speed. In this case, 125 FPS is the most ideal to use. Even though 250 and 333 have higher potential speeds, they only apply to jumps towards northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. Both 250 and 333 reach speeds of only about 350 units per second when traveling north, south, east, and west, which is much lower than 125's potential speed of 430. The reason 250 or 333 is best for mods with jump underscore slowdown enable set to 1 is because you're most likely not going to be traveling in a straight line constantly, so the extra boost in diagonal directions can be utilized. 
Now, of course, if there are corners needed to be cut in a death run map, 333 would be a more useful cap due to the path being diagonal rather than straight. But since 125 is needed much more frequently, you need a way to switch between these caps without opening the console. To do this, open the console and type forward slash bind space key of your choice space toggle space com underscore max fps space fps value. This will automatically change your FPS cap to the set value without having to open the console. Some miscellaneous FPS values are 142, 166, 500, and 1000. 142 and 166 are similar to what 125 would be to 250, but instead of having increased speed, the gravity is increased. The angles for 142 and 166 are opposite of each other, much like 125 and 250. 500 and 1000 are bugged values drastically increasing the player's gravity, almost to the point where they're unusable, with exceptions to hitting bounces for more height. To make this easier to understand, picture a 3D sphere that encases the player inside. When the forward key is pressed alone, a unit vector, or radius, of the sphere is added in the direction the player is facing, relapsing 190 times per second, causing forward movement. Since this speed isn't properly enforced, another unit vector with the same y value can be added to exceed this speed along with horizontal mouse movement. There is no central way to perform a strafe jump, because the only objective is to turn the mouse from the initial vector to the secondary while pressing the correct movement keys. For the keys, the most commonly used are W for forward, A for left strafe, S for back pedal, D for right strafe, Shift for sprint, and the spacebar for jump. These can vary either due to the keyboard being in a different language or the pre-existing habit of using a different set of keys, such as the arrow keys at the bottom right, or I, J, K, and L. For those of you with a keyboard of a different language, simply pick four keys that make a rough triangular shape anywhere on the keyboard where it's comfortable, and have a fifth key for sprinting, six for crouching, and so on. An extremely common misconception is that crouching increases the player's speed and or jump height while strafe jumping. Although it may look as if it does, testing the theory will show no signs of speed or jump height increase. Despite this, it's a good habit to develop especially for ProMod, since it makes jumping through vertically tight spaces easier. For the mouse, in the Controls tab in the Pause menu, go to the Look tab and there will be two options called Smooth Mouse and Mouse Sensitivity. Make sure that Smooth Mouse is set to Yes, as it reduces input lag and smooths the frames of the pointer while in motion. For mouse sensitivity, the setting is completely personal preference. The exact speed at which the mouse is moved is difficult to determine, since going too slow causes the secondary unit vector to shift too far from the favored direction, and going too fast prevents the character from shifting its sprint speed to the desired direction. It is possible to fall in between these two extremes with any sensitivity, but the horizontal movement required will vary. Another common misconception is that bigger horizontal mouse movements leads to farther strafes. Pressing the right keys and applying the correct mouse movement will not accelerate the player's speed like gravity. Once the player is in full sprint speed, which only takes a few frames, and the mouse movement travels from the initial unit vector to the secondary, the player will not go any faster. The steps to perform a strafe jump are forward plus sprint, left or right strafe, left or right horizontal mouse movement, and then jump. No matter where you look, as long as the path of the mouse is horizontally constant, the strafe jump can be done correctly. Diagonal paths do not work as well since the diagonal line has less of an effect on the X coordinate, decreasing the angle of the movement, which then decreases potential speed. You might be asking, why doesn't semicircle mouse movement work? They do start and end to the same Y coordinate, but that value changes during the process, which also decreases the potential speed similarly to diagonal movement. The reason why vertical movement doesn't work is that the X coordinate does not change, while the Y coordinate does. Basically the opposite of what you want. Now I know this is a lot of information to take in, so feel free to ask questions in the comments so I can answer any questions that you may have. Keep in mind that you will not master this at, on the first day at all. It will take hours and hours of practice before you even familiarize yourself with the technique, but it will be worth it.
Thank you all for watching, and see you all in the next video.